many a time when I was really young, I'd cry myself to sleep at night, saying, I want to be tall, I want to be tall, why am I small? It's extremely hard when you're out there on your own. When I was going for my teens, I never thought I'd get married because I thought, well, you know, when you're at school, everybody else has got boyfriends and all the lads have got girlfriends are all going out on dates. But I wasn't. I was always left. And it, it hurt a lot. You know, it hurt. It really did hurt. When Will and Denise Coppen were married, many of their wedding guests were small like them. Denise and Will have achondroplasia, a condition which affects up to 50 babies born each year. This is the story of people who are born to be small. Yeah, we can actually take the baby to the yeah. Bloom Festival, can't we? Debbie Salvage has a rare bone disorder, known as SED. One of the carriers. No, the Debbie and Steve met in their local pub and married two years later. Now Debbie's discovered she's pregnant with their first child. But over the next few months, Debbie's pregnancy will be more difficult because she is small. It's a relief. I know I am now pregnant. I think you still do doubt until it actually happens. It's always a doubt in the back of your mind because of my size. Can't wait to become a mum. Make Steve for that. It was nerve wracking bringing up the clinic to find out it's what you wanted to, but you didn't in case it was a uh, negative. So I was shaking out my fingers crossed. And I rung up and I was so excited and I couldn't wait to tell Steve. I was so, so happy. It was brilliant, it was wonderful. Best feeling in the world. Nice to bring the baby up here. Yeah, It'd be nice, in, nice in the summer, wouldn't it? Yeah. Debbie didn't have any real emotional problems with her, herself. She accepted that she was small because we talked about it as she grew. She found it hard when other people wouldn't accept her because she didn't want to be different. She still doesn't like being different. I worry. I worry about Debbie going through the birth and I just can't wait until it's all over. <laughs> then I'll be happy. Debbie's condition can be passed on through her genes to the baby she's now carrying. But until her scan, she won't know if her child is affected. If the baby is going to be uh, with my condition, Obviously, we'd be worried as parents, but I know I've turned out all right in the end, and I don't see a reason not to have a child. It's going to have the same treatment, same love and attention from us, whatever. It's, it's our baby, so mm. we're going to love it no matter what. Yeah. This yeah. is busy down here this morning. It's not too bad. When you get up and you've got to go to town, but you've got up in the bed the wrong side of bed and you're in a stinking mood, the last thing you want is to walk through town and everybody looking at you because it drives you mad. And they made comments like, you know, look at that. Or oh, look at Shorty, and look at that little man, and look at that little lady. Aren't they funny? 
There's a mighty white. You're bound to get it, we are different, but there is some days where you just go and want it. You know, you just think, leave me alone, you know, I'm only small, just leave me alone. Yeah, it's right at the back, isn't it? Yeah. Don't fall in. I've been turned down, so no end of jobs. I went to one particular interview, and there was a panel interview, there's three people on there. I'm not racist at all, I'm not prejudiced, but one of the guys that interviewed was coloured. And um, I went in the door, sat down, and I got in halfway through the interview, and he actually said to me, how long have I had my condition? How long have I been small? And I literally choked, I thought, what a stupid question. I thought, well, I've got to answer it. And I thought to myself, well, I can answer this in three ways. One, I could turn around and say, oh, how long have you been coloured? I thought, well, no, I'll get kicked out straight away. Two, I felt like saying, well, yesterday I was five foot two. When I woke up this morning, I'm only three foot ten. And I thought, well, that's not going to get me anywhere. So I looked them all in the eye, like I said, there's three of them. I said, you've never met anybody with my condition, have you? And they all looked at the floor and they said no. And as we left, the officer actually said to me, are you going back home? And I wasn't, I was going to the job centre, and I told them. I said, no, I'll go to the job centre to see what other jobs they've got for me, and I'll be in touch. And I actually got the job. This is our little home. Yeah, we've adapted the kitchen, the light switches. Um, I couldn't live in a normal house. If I stayed with my parents for a weekend on my own, I can't reach anything. Yep. All through our life, we've always had to make adaptions wherever we go. This is our home. My rule is, if you come here, you help with the washing up. And I don't care if it does hurt your back. Because when we go to your house, we stand on something. So we make adoptions, and you make adoptions when you come here. It's the day of Debbie's scan. Today, she'll find out if her baby will be small like her or tall like her husband, Steve. If the baby inherits her rare condition, it could face operations on its joints. Debbie herself has had 11 operations. Obviously, if we had a choice, well, I wouldn't uh, wish it on the baby at all. I'd rather it didn't have to go through operations like any mother would. Good. So here's the baby, just here. You see that, looking at you now? It's like a little skull, the baby's face on, the, on a scan. We'll go right up. See how fat the baby is. Mm. Okay, so now we're going to measure one of the thigh bones. Can you see it there on the screen? Yeah. Dr. Smith tests for short stature in the fetus by measuring the size of the baby's bones. That goes from there to there. The distance between the two epiphyses. And that's 19, that's femur length. And then the two bones of the shin, just there, you see? That's 16 and 15. These are all the charts for uh, standard limb, limb length at this stage, at about 17, 18 weeks. And these are the bones in the shin, which you see is, is quite a bit below. And another bone in the shin, which is also quite a bit below. And it goes on for the other bones as well. So that, that certainly is looking very much like the baby has the same condition. Right. All right? Yeah. I've also noticed, looking at the baby, you can see on this picture here, that the baby's, the baby's chest has the same sort of shape to it as, yeah. as yours. Right. And um, it uh, would also fit with the baby having the same condition as you. But from the measurements we've taken today, it would, they would be uh, more in keeping with the baby being, um, having the same condition as you had. All right?
I think it's a relief to know exactly now, one way or the other, that we just get on with it now. If it's a choice of uh, not having a baby at all, or having a baby with my condition, I go for having a baby with my condition every time. I'd rather have a baby like that than not have a baby at all. Well, appeared to stop growing when she was about seven. And it was our GP who picked up the fact that she was very tiny for her age. We're nearly there now, Zoe. All right? A bit nervous. Apart from her height, Zoe Irving looks like any other child. Zoe is 13, but she's stuck at the height of a seven-year-old. Zoe's bones will not grow. Her only chance to gain height is a painful operation to lengthen her legs. So I was quite keen to, to go ahead. I don't think she realised at the time, as none of us did, exactly how painful it was going to be. OK, Zoe, now, I need to explain to you what's going to happen tomorrow. We've talked in the clinic about how to make you grow taller, and we know that from the growth charts, it looks as though you're only going to be about, I think we worked it out at about four foot, four inches. What we have to do is we have to cut the bone, usually about here, and then we wait a few days while the bone starts to heal. And then we gradually stretch the healing bone to make the leg grow longer. You'll be walking out of hospital when you leave on crutches. Anything else? No. Right, I'll see you tomorrow then. I'm really small and that look for my age. My friends are like head and shoulders above me and I'm down below. I would like to be taller because I've been this height since I was seven and once I heard the, about the opportunity, I went for it. She came home crying a, a couple of times from school because people had been, been un, generally unkind to her. She's, she's suffered quite a lot with teasing. She found it very hard at, at school, especially on the first day of, of term when the new ones came in, that nobody would believe she was as old as she was. Even just um, about three inches is what she'll achieve. Um, but it means so much to her. OK, sweetheart, I'm ready for a big day tomorrow. Mm -hmm. No worries? No. Okay. At bedtime. She uh, uh, just said, I suppose it's too late now for me to, uh, to change my mind. She just said that she was very frightened. I think it's suddenly really come home as to just what a big operation this is. Yeah, I mean, they got some nice uh, stuff for after death and the nightwear. I think that, that would, that, that would be ideal for you after. You don't want no birth weight, do you? No, because we're what, not sure how small. What do you want? So the next one. Newborn. Newborn. What that size one. is that? That's newborn. Up to six that's pounds. That's up to six yeah. pounds six. You're happy about that's pretty, isn't it? You like that, do you? We'll have one of those then. Debbie is now 30 weeks into her pregnancy. Now which way to go? Yeah, straight down the bottom. Yeah. Go as far as you can go. Thanks, then. Today, she's going to meet Dr. McLeod, who will deliver her baby. And obviously, you can feel baby moving. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can feel baby moving. Yeah, it's nice to Yeah. 
Okay, now I'm just going to feel down here. Baby's actually growing very well, and, and I mean, although baby's limbs uh, are shorter than normal, the actual sort of body size is well, very I'm, much in yeah. keeping with, you know, with sort of normal growth. So it's a fair size baby. So, so basically we are looking at caesarean, but normally we would do a, a planned caesarean usually at about sort of 38, 39 weeks. But I think in your case, I think we're concerned that you're not actually going to get that far, uh, <laughs> simply because there isn't, um, you know, there isn't the room. So I, I, mean, I would have thought we're probably realistically looking somewhere between 34 and 36 weeks. So we're probably looking at beginning of July. Yeah. And I would have thought, I mean, if we aimed, I don't know, how about Friday the 5th of July? How does, how does, that, how does that sound? Yeah, that sounds fine. Does that sound all right? Very exciting. Yeah. yeah. It's getting, it it's seems getting, to... It's getting... It seemed like to zoom by, hasn't it, when we first mm. found out? Yeah. He was pregnant. And now I'm 30 weeks. And we've got six weeks left. The day of Zoe's operation, which she hopes will change her life by making her taller. Zoe's mother, Erica, and father, David, are aware there are risks involved. I just hope that everything goes to plan. I mean, this operation is never simple. There's always problems, which everybody's explained to us, things that can go wrong and, and do go wrong. Can you take a big deep breath in for me? Can you open your eyes for me? The surgeon drills a web of wires through the bones in Zoe's legs. This is going to go in very well. These wires are the struts of two metal frames, which Zoe will wear for six months. Can you do the bottom one. The surgeon saws through the leg bones. Each day, Zoe's legs will be stretched on the frames. Okay. I believe the wires are now nice and taut. This is how she will grow. Only when the stretching stops will the bones heal. But in the painful months ahead, will Zoe's sacrifice be worth it? We went through all the scans, everything was perfect. It wasn't really until 28 weeks when we went for a scan, purely by chance, because I have high blood pressure, that there was any indication of anything other than normal. We were having the guided tour, if you like. There's the tummy, there's the head. There's his little heart beating, and then it finished. Um, and from then, all there was was definitely something isn't right. Dawn and Steve Oxley learned that their son Harry would be born with achondroplasia. They're still trying to come to terms with it. We were just numb, absolutely, totally, you know, I mean, I think shock is, uh, is an understatement, really. Up to 50 babies a year are born with achondroplasia, a bone condition which causes short limbs. Most of these babies are born to parents of normal height, 
it's a genetic accident which could happen to any couple. You know, from that day, our lives were turned upside down, inside out. You know, things will never, ever be the same again. You know, we keep asking, why, why us, you know, don't we? Mm -hmm. why, why not that couple over there, you know, why not that, why not that family? I mean, you know, we, we could go, we don't go to football matches, but if we went to a football match and there were 50,000 people there, chances are we'd be the only couple with a dwarf baby. And I can imagine looking round at those 50,000 people and saying to everybody, you know, why, why haven't you got a child like this? Why? What, what's, so, what's so different about, <clears throat> about us, you know? Why, why are we the chosen ones, as it were, you know? Well, I think for a lot of people, the only image is the circus image, if they haven't actually met somebody who's small. Uh, so the clown image. So I think they possibly think that we're not quite so intelligent, although there are very, some very, very intelligent people who are small. All the way through the pregnancy, I'd been talking to him. The crux came when I went for the final scan. I was told by doctors I was going to have a, a circus dwarf. Um, it was... I was told that he had hate contraplasia, but it was an easier way, if you like, to, to make me realise what that entailed. At that very point, I thought to myself, yes, this is real. But because of the actual term, it felt as though I was carrying a monster. It was, um, it was terrible. And I basically had two hours where I was thumping my tummy and, and telling him to die, telling him that I didn't want him. And every time he kicked me, and he, he'd kicked quite a lot, which had always been something that I loved and I enjoyed, suddenly I kept telling him to stop doing it. Perhaps if I'd understood a little bit more about achondroplasia, I wouldn't have felt that he was a monster. But because of the term I was given, I thought of a freak. I get the feeling now that the people at the hospital didn't really, or still don't know much about the condition. I must admit, I feel, I, I feel angry. I do feel, um, I do feel angry about that, you know, that uh, it could have, uh, we could have had more support and, and help. I just remember waking up and seeing the balloon with It's a Boy, the flowers, blue and yellow flowers and congratulations. I just spent most of the time crying and thinking about how it could have been, and it wasn't. I think if somebody had given me a, an easy option to maybe have him <coughs> adopted, I would have thought about it. I don't think I would have gone through with it, but I just wanted to reverse the whole situation. I didn't want to have been pregnant at all. That was it. It's two weeks after Zoe's operation to lengthen her legs. Her struggle to grow taller has begun. Each day, Zoe's wounds must be cleaned with a salt solution to prevent infection. Any infection could be devastating for Zoe's prospects. A couple of times I feel a, felt a bit down and annoyed, but not all the time. At least you're growing. Mm-hmm. Means great. Do it to me. It's like a wish come true. Oh, sorry. 
By turning the special adjusters on the frames, Zoe stretches the healing fractures in her legs. Each day, she gains one millimetre in height. Can you straighten up my leg, please? Mm -hmm. I'm turning this. Feels really good after about six years. I'm finally growing, which is really great. There's so much of growing. Yep. Uh, now that's three, five millimetres and three. Three quarters. Want a coffee, Steve? Please. You wait for this, you? Harry is now 18 months old. It's as though we were robbed, really. Um, but, you know, that's not to say that uh, I don't love Harry. I mean, I love, love him dearly. But um, I wanted a child with Dawn. You know. Come on. Thank you. And uh, I, I don't know, I just felt as though it was taken away from us, really. I mean, nobody wants a child that is is different in in such an extreme way. So coming to terms with that is uh, I just sometimes feel as though I'm going one step forward and and two back, you know. We are trying for a child. We've been married three years in September and we are trying at the moment for a child. Um, the statistics are, because we're both small, there's a 50% chance of having a baby with the same condition as us. Nice. The baby I would prefer, it sounds like I'm being selfish now, but if somebody could give me a choice, I would go for a baby with a chondroplasia. Nice. The only reason being, I know how that baby would be brought up and I know the problem it's going to go through because the parent's being small. Yes. Right. Let's take your nappy off. It wasn't really until he was born that my, my fears for the future began. Yeah. One, two, three. Woo! They were quite selfish fears. They were fears about how I was going to cope. Having a child who was predominantly a child with a condition rather than my son. I think my main fears for Harry's future, um, I mean, number one on the list uh, is obviously school. I worry about how he might fit in. Will he be bullied? Will he be intimidated? Um, will he be treated differently by the teachers? All these questions sort of spring to mind, and, well, neither of us have any answers. So you coming in for a workout then? Well, I might just watch you. Get changed and come in. I might just watch you. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll see you okay. later. Okay, anyway. see you later. Okay, right. see you. Problems resulting from his condition, um, emotional problems. I must admit, things have been touch and go in terms of our relationship. Uh, it's been not just a strain, but it's just been sometimes impossible. Just the immense anxiety uh, which uh, has manifested itself in friction between us. which is uh, 
just crazy, really, because you know we we don't want to separate. You know, we want to stay together. You know, we're we're husband and wife. We love each other. We're we're Harry's parents. I did get to the point when I th thought yes, and I did try to take my life, but by that point. The whole situation was so abstract, it was... I didn't think to myself, my son is a dwarf, I want to take my life. But I strongly believe that it could have been completely different. With proper counselling at the right time, we could have forgotten about blame. We could have known exactly what was going on, that there was nothing we could have done to avoid it, and we could have started to build towards having a baby that we could help. Zoe is back in hospital two months after her operation and facing a crisis. Come on, Zoe, we have to do it. Oh, no! Stop! <laughs> hold on, Zoe, hold on. Zoe's ankles and knees have stiffened up. If the hospital physio can't straighten Zoe's legs, she'll be forced to stop the lengthening process. I'm not doing it now. Are you ready? No. One, two, three. Four. Come on, Zoe. Five. This has been the worst part so far, I think. So I just have to try and switch off and, and help her through it as best I can. And just be, be there holding her hand. So, yes, I think we're all, the whole family's getting quite, uh, quite tired and exhausted now with it. Mm -hmm. On my back. Please. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. Why go through all that pain? Because a lot of pain for three inches. Right, if you get very tense. Why? You know, they have, we've had a life, we've struggled, well, I know we struggled in our teenage years, but we've come up smelling of roses, we've come up shining, and we could do, we've, nothing holds us back. I drive a car, we both drive a car. We got married, we have a house, we're hoping to start a family. So, what, what's stopping me? I haven't had it done. <laughs> it's quite nice being small. I won't change it. When you're younger, you always think you're special because you've been given this different body. It gives you quite a bit of, oh, yeah, I'm the only one in here that's like me. <laughs> if I walk through that door tomorrow, normal height, I won't be Denise. I won't be the person that everybody's grown up with and everybody hopefully loves and everybody knows. I won't be me and I won't feel the same. I won't change it for the world. I'm quite happy being small. Never felt I wanted to mix and talk to other people like myself to see what they was like. I felt that I'd be stared at I'd rather be with a crowd full of tall people, mm. either one. Because that's how I sit. I don't, don't see myself as, like, little like that. I was more convinced that Debbie would meet somebody of normal stature than I was that she'd meet somebody like herself. Because she didn't mix with anybody like herself. Perhaps going out with his friends, he might feel a bit embarrassed. Like being seen with both of us, and whether he tell his friends. But it's never no, been never a problem. Plans, Steve's but... never been worried about it. He's never said it. He was worried about it. He's always been proud when we've been out with your hmm. friends. We don't see there's a difference in our size, do we? No. It's the day before Debbie's caesarean section. It seems strange, like tomorrow I'll be a mum. We actually see our baby at last and hopefully I'll be able to cuddle it. You know, we've got a little son or daughter. 
yeah, if it is so rich in feelings, it's hard to explain. Okay, so this morning, Catherine, um, there's a woman coming in having a second baby in labour. If you could take her into room two, please. And round in theatre, we've got Mrs. Salvage coming up for her cesarean. Okay. When Debbie herself was born, she had breathing problems due to her small rib cage. Today, the special care unit is on standby in case Debbie's baby has similar problems. Okay. The baby's moving around like mad. Okay. Yeah. Can I come first? I can't see yet yet. No. So I can see a leg. It's the first thing I saw. It's coming. Can you see it? Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. It's brilliant. I can see it. Mm. Can't tell me the boy or girl yet. Can you? Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I can, all I can see is the bum in the back. Yeah. Oh. I think it could be a girl. I think it could be a little girl. Yeah. There we go. Oh, there we go. There we go. There we are. There you can see. Nice little girl. It is a little girl. Yeah. Okay. And she's making, making all the right noises. There we go. We're going to pass her over. Yeah, she is little. She's little. She's gorgeous, isn't she? Yes, she is. Isn't she lovely? Yeah. Like a quick touch of my face. Isn't she gorgeous? Yeah, she's fine, isn't she? There you go, put that back on your finger. All right, we'll see you down there in a bit then. Okay. okay. I'll see you soon. But she's doing good, isn't she? Is she doing well? And you see? Let me kiss you. Let me kiss you. Well done. Well done. Was it one? I did it. It went well. It, right? it went yeah. very well, yeah. Yeah, quick, wasn't it? Yeah, it was quick. And she cried, it was quick. Yeah, she was crying. Straight away, before, before, just, just, as soon as she comes out, it was a little. I told you it was crying. I knew it was. Yeah. 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 I've seen your leg for a while, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is just to take the sweat on things. So we'll just cut straight down the middle now. And there's that there leg. There we go. Say hello to your leg now. Wow. It's nice and clean, actually, isn't it? That's good. OK, well done. I've got it. Don't worry. That's fine. Just let it bend a little bit. Yeah. I was quite concerned that they were going to be badly scarred. That was one thing that did quite worry me but I mean obviously they have, they have got marks on but nothing like I imagine they would be and it's lovely there's no no frames no plaster no. just got her legs back <laughs> there's no pain down here at all no. Zoe is three inches taller and she can walk without support for the first time it's a moon walk. <laughs> I think for me it's been very important. It seems to it seems to have gone on forever. I and mean, it's been nine months of very hard work for, for Zoe and, and all the family. And so I think I've been looking forward to this day more than any other one. You know, we're really turned the corner, we're just getting to the end of it now. Push down, that's it. Now bend your knee as far as you can. So it's like a funny walk, okay? I've got to shave my legs tonight. <laughs> shave them? <Yeah. laughs> there we go. Once a year, small people from all over Britain <laughs> assemble for the Dwarf Athletics. Thank you. Oh, that's nice and brown. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. 
The night before the games, Dawn, Steve and Harry get ready for dinner. I felt very nervous. I hadn't ever seen um, a small person apart from in a pantomime. I didn't really know how I would feel. Hi, yeah. There's a, a Jennifer oh. Elliott. Uh, She's in America. Nottingham. Yeah, yeah. I'm... We didn't know quite quite what to expect, really. Um, but it was just it was just a marvelous sight. We just walked in through these doors, and there were babies, toddlers, uh, middle-aged people, but they were all um, small people. And for the first time, we were able to just walk around freely and not be not sort of feel as though people are looking at us. Should we go to the front now? Is he still in that? Yeah, he's still in the plastic cap. What's, what's, what's his name? Is it common? It's, it's very common, thank you. Know. We were able to show Harry off. We were able to say, look, this, this is our little baby, you know, for the first time. We were just so proud of him. And, of course, we could see the way perhaps his life was going to go through the years by looking at the different age groups and the way they were enjoying themselves and how positive they were. Coffee. Two Two coffees. Coffees. 18 months of... Agony, I suppose, almost torture, was taken away for a weekend. I can't actually remember the first time I actually saw a small person, but I do remember thinking, I'm going to be like them. This is what I'm going to look like. It was like looking into a mirror. Time when you actually walk into a room full of people, that's where you know you get the normally it hits you. Which was, um, I believe there is a kind of special bond between small people when they all get together. Uh, there is, it's like I've been told, it's like one big family. I think it's a lot easier to accept if you know a lot of other small people. If you're out there on your own, you feel very isolated. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. It's a confusing time, really, because um, it it almost felt like right. Well, we'll go, we'll go now, and we'll leave you here with 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 your family. We live in a tall world, so you can't isolate yourselves from the tall people. And it would be impossible just to live in a world of, of dwarfs or whatever.
Debbie's baby, Abigail, is now seven weeks old. Only three pounds, 10 ounces at birth, she's gaining weight fast. Be a mum, I think, is the best feeling in the world. Okay. It seems amazing. It's a miracle, really. That, that little bundle, what was inside you. It's, it's just wonderful. With Abby, uh, she's not going to be as tall as other children. She's going to grow slower because of the condition she got, because she obviously got the same as me. That's a good girl. We just encourage her, her height's not a problem. If she wants to do some art, to do it. Because we're not going to wrap her in cotton wool. She's got to get out there and learn to live with everyone. Abigail Ann, I baptise you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Obviously, I proved that I can have a baby and have done. And she's perfect. Just because you're um, smaller than anyone else, you can go out and have babies. There ain't nothing stopping you. It's only your size. I just hope it gives everyone else encouragement. Just go out and enjoy life and just get on with it. That's how you do it. The achievement oh of the last sort of year or so have been very emotional. <laughs> What's changed for me is a, a respect for Harry. Oh, you're a clever boy, aren't you? When he did first sit, I was looking mainly at his face and he was trying so hard, and I, I felt not just for himself but for us, he was sort of looking at us and saying, I can do it, can't I? We're going flying, are we? We are at the stage now that we, we both believe that we've got through a crisis. The love that I think was lacking in the early days was love for a baby. Now, I personally have love for a person that probably is, is stronger than it would have been if he hadn't had problems. And it's a, it's a two-way thing. I, I feel a lot of love from Harry. Mm -hmm.